Every time that uh, we're getting together as a family, we cook the, the, the recipes from home. I think we have brought a little bit of our country here. You know, we were taken out of the country, but the country hasn't been taken away from us. I grew up in El Salvador. At the age of two years old, my mother and my father separated. Having two kids by herself, my mother was having a tough time. She decided to leave the country and migrate to the U.S. My mom left us with our grandparents. Growing up, it was great. Uh, beautiful farming life. My grandmother, she was the one that brought uh, God to our lives. Every day we used to have uh, Bible studies, and you know, every single day. And then the reward was to have dinner after. And her cooking was the best. <laughs> her cooking was the best. When I think about the farm, I picture my grandfather taking a deep breath and just uh, enjoying the view. He would tell me, you know, look at how beautiful that that field looks. You know, look at how beautiful the corn is coming up. That last day, we were coming back from, from the farm, you know, we would see somebody dead on the side of the, uh, the road. It was people that we knew uh, that were killed. My, my grandmother and my grandfather, they had to make a, a decision and, and just take us to the village. It was the toughest thing to do. We're leaving everything behind. And then you start hearing gunshots. And then you hear the, uh, the bullets hit the wall. The kids, they were screaming and crying. Mom saying, be quiet, you know, quiet. You don't want to be heard. couldn't go to school because they used to go to the schools and grab the kids and just take them. 13 years old, I was recruited. I was part of a ward now. The first night that I, you know, got that rifle placed on my hands it was the longest night of my life. All they do is just, you know, tell you if you see anything moving, you shoot. What if they come in and attack us? I'm not going to be able to shoot this thing. Of all the kids that I used to play with, um, only a couple of them survived. My grandmother, I remember seeing her down on her knees, praying at 2, 3 in the morning. It just happened to be that uh, every time we were out there, we didn't get attacked. God was looking, looking out for us. When I came to the U.S., it was hard not knowing the language and not having too many people to talk to. A lot of times I thought, you know, I don't belong here in this country. You know, why didn't I stay back there? I was angry. I used to ask my mom, why did you bring me here? When I moved out of the house, that's when I really got into uh, the drinking, drinking problem. 
used to play soccer. And after practice, it was drinking. And you know, every weekend after the game, you, we would drink. Sometimes the next day, I didn't know how I got home. It was the darkest part of my life. I felt like I was out of place. I didn't belong here and I couldn't go back there. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. My thought was, okay, if I save some money, I would be able to buy myself a ticket and go back and, and be able to see my grandmother and my grandfather. And that's how I met my wife. My wife used to live across the street from my grandmother. We started dating and that's when things started to change. I asked her if she wanted to marry me, and she said, well, if you don't stop drinking, you're not going to marry me. I started going back to church. I fell in love again with God, <laughs> just the way I, I used to be in love with him when I was a, a, a kid growing up. His grace has been really good to me. In this country, I've been able to do a lot of things. I don't think I, I would have been able to give the life that my kids have in my home country. But I tell my wife that the first thing I'm doing when I uh, retire is going back home. I, I can't wait for that day to say, you know what? I'm going back home. I'm not saying that this is not home. Right now, this is home. But when I go back, it's gonna be my real home.